Hi, this is Father Stefan Yap with a reflection on the exaltation of the cross and Our Lady of Sorrows. It isn't very common that the church decides to put two feast days back to back with a linked theme. And when she does this, she's telling us to look at something, that there's something here that we have, that we should look at. Today, I'd like to reflect on the pierced hearts of Jesus and Mary. The presentation of the temple after Jesus was presented to the priest Simeon, he turns to Mary, his mother, and says these words. Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against. And the sword will pierce through your own soul also, that thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. Fast forward 33 years at the crucifixion of Jesus and John, the Beloved, writes these words. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. It is at this moment that the prophecy of Simeon is fulfilled. Jesus is already dead when his side is pierced. His soul has already been sent to the Father. He cannot feel the pain of being pierced in his side. Instead, his mother Mary, who is very much alive and very much present at the crucifixion, feels the pierce, the piercing of Jesus. It is then that her heart is pierced, just as Jesus' heart was pierced. And if we look at images of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus, their hearts are still pierced. They are open wide so that grace may be poured out onto all of us. Because it is at the crucifixion that Jesus looks at Mary and says, Woman, behold your son. And then looks at the beloved disciple John and says, Behold your mother. It is at that moment that it says that John took Mary into his home, into his heart. During, these, during this time, recently after Jesus' death, I'm sure that they consoled one another. John losing his best friend, Mary losing her son, trading the Son of God for a Son of Man, trading the Master for his disciple. There must have been great sorrow in Mary's heart. But there is something that Mary knew and would have helped her during these times of difficulty. And I'm sure she did the same for John. This was to console John because she knew of the victory that Christ won on the cross. And that will be revealed to them in three days at the resurrection. That same hope, that same comfort, that same tenderness that Mary gave to John, she also gives to us. She knows the pains and sorrows and sufferings that we experience. And we bring, we welcome Mary into our hearts, into our home, and tend to her as our mother. She tends to us as her sons and her daughters. Because she knows very well that there will always be a resurrection.